you know, sometimes I'll be honest with you. I hate how my mind works because I'm I'm such a movie fan and I've seen so many different storylines, especially within comic book movies. I I had a feeling I knew what the post credit scene was going to be about. It's still it's a, it's it's still it's very surprising in terms of like I didn't think it was going to happen, but yeah. <laughs> Boy, well, this is going to be my quick non-spoiler review of Venom Let There Be Carnage. This stars Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, Michelle Williams, and that's about it. Those <laughs> are the main three in the movie. This is, of course, a sequel to 2018's Venom. I want to say it's 2018's Venom. I hope I'm right. This is gonna be a non-spoiler review, but I will put a small asterisk next, next to that. I, do, I don't feel like I should do this video without mentioning the post credit scene because it is kind of a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but I don't wanna spoil the entire movie. So I'm gonna talk about the movie first, and then I will give a spoiler warning for the post credit scene of Venom Let There Be Carnage. I'm warning you, I'm going, I can't talk about or give my thoughts on that without spoiling it. It's, it has a lot of ramifications to the overall future of the franchise. So, 99% of the video will be non-spoiler review. The 1%, I will talk about that post credit scene, but that will be at the end of this video. If you are new to this channel and this is your first time checking me out, hi, like I said at the beginning, my name is Will, and I do movie reviews and other other weird videos on the internet. So if it is your sort of bag, your sort of deal, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to get to know you. I love talking to people in the comments. It'd be a lot of fun and I'm a bit of a goof. So hopefully you do enjoy this. Venom Let There Be Carnage takes place about a year after the original Venom movie. And we see that uh, Eddie Brock and Venom are still a pair. They're still basically just doing things and trying to work out the weird relationship that they have. And everything does kind of go up in flames where they accidentally transfer a piece of the symbiote from Venom into the serial killer named Cleus Cassidy, played by Woody Harrelson in the movie, and he becomes the villainous Carnage, who is an offspring of Venom, and goes on a tear. And it's up to Eddie and Venom to stop him. That is the overall basis of the movie. I will not make any qualms about it. The first Venom movie is not my favorite. It's if it wasn't for Tom Hardy's performance and the relationship between Eddie and Venom, it probably would have been a downer for me. But I will say, surprisingly, I like Venom Let There Be Carnage more than the first movie. I think the first movie tried to be bigger than what it needed to be. The With this movie, which is directed by Andy Serkis this time, most notably he portrayed Gollum in Lord of the Rings. He's, uh, he's a motion capture legend and a fantastic director and he took the reins of Venom Let There Be Carnage and I gotta say I really love what he did with the movie. It's a much more focused story where the first one tried to be the big bombastic. We want to make this character into like a A-lister very reminiscent of something like a Spider-Man because with, with Venom with the Sony universe there's no Spider-Man, so Venom's origin was drastically different than what we've gotten in the comics. Or even in any of the animated television shows that have featured Spider-Man and the character of Venom. But I do, I am glad that they kept the origin of Carnage very similar to what it is in the comics, where he is an offspring of Venom, and they did display that in the movie. It's not a spoiler because it's in the trailer. But I really continue to enjoy Tom Hardy's performance as Eddie Brock. I've kind of gotten used to the voice choice that he went with this because he does have a very heavy accent so he does try to change it up to make it sound more american the continued relationship between eddie and venom and the evolution of their relationship to much more much more than just a partnership they are literally it's a queer couple let's just be real there's a moment in the movie where they break up and go their separate ways for a good chunk of the movie but eventually come back together in order to take on cletus cassidy who's portrayed by woody harrelson in the movie and woody harrelson and many movies plays a serial killer very very well and I will say one of the benefits of this movie and why I felt like this is a much better movie than the first movie is that the villain of the movie Cleus Cassidy aka Carnage is a much more imposing threat to Eddie and Venom it 
it is a better character design than what we got with whatever the hell his name was. And character motivations makes more sense. The movie definitely focuses on relationships. Relationships is the through line of the entire movie. Between Eddie and Venom's relationship and Cletus's relationship with his love interest, um, a character named Shriek, who they actually set up pretty well. I was worried that this character, when first mentioned, was going to be another villain in the movie. I felt like it was going to be a throwaway villain. But the way that the relationship between Cletus and Shriek is in the movie. It is a true love story, if you want to call it. This is a love story for both sides of the coin. You get two different two different viewpoints of relationships. You get Eddie and Venom and Cletus and, and, and Shriek. How those relationships, especially between Cletus and Carnage, compared to Eddie and Venom, you can see who's the superior relationship between the two of them. Woody Harrelson's just fantastic as the role of Cletus Cassidy. He... I, I want to say when they were coming up with the character, he must have been an inspiration. Because every time I see Woody Harrelson and any time I heard anybody talking about potentially doing a live action Carnage, he was the first person that always popped in my head to portray the, portray the character. And I, it, he just does a really good job in the movie. And it's a much more interesting villain and it's a much more smaller personal story between the two characters. Everyone has a legit connection to be involved with each other. It's more prevalent in the third act. Why? Because everybody is connected. All the major characters who have major speaking lines. Uh, Michelle Williams does return as Annie or Anne, who was the original love interest of Eddie Brock in the first movie. And in the first movie, honestly, when I did the review, I couldn't remember her name. I couldn't even remember the actress's name. That's how underutilized I felt like she was in that first movie. In this movie, she has a, a much more reduced role, but I feel like they did better with her role in this movie than they did in the first and than they did in the first Venom movie. Uh, she was she was very integral in reuniting Eddie and Venom in the movie. And it was it was important to have her character there. Initially, when I when the ending kind of concluded of the movie before we got the post credit scene, I kind of felt weird about it. I felt like they that I, I felt that if that was where the movie was truly ending, some of the characters might have been wasted. But of course, I'll talk about the post credit scene in a few minutes. That completely blows the doors off of this this that entire feeling it actually makes more sense after watching the post credit scene so of course make sure you stick stick around for the post credit scene of this movie um i thought the character design for carnage looked a lot better than venom i think it looked more accurate comic wise because of course venom in the comics has the the spider-man symbol on it but being that this iteration of Venom does not have any legit ties to Spider-Man, you don't have that sort of iconography on the character's design of Venom, whereas Carnage looks definitely like <laughs> Carnage. And I will say for PG-13 violence, they pushed it as far as they can freaking push it. There's a lot of scenes that, that Carnage gets very personable with some people before dispatching them and I was like okay they're, they're pushing that PG-13 as best as they can without going super heavy or super gory the action sequences in the movie were actually pretty well done as well I feel like they did more with Carnage than they did with Venom in the first movie if that kind of makes sense and the sort of Venom day out that they have within the middle of the movie is, is funny and entertaining and it makes you realize that the relationship that Eddie and Venom have is a very special relationship and they really can't live without each other. Not from a standpoint of one can't survive without the other because technically Venom has to be attached to someone to survive. But they both need each other. They both need each other to be successful. And actually Venom does a lot of work for, Ven for Eddie. And it shows that Eddie on his own is not necessarily the best person and neither is Venom but together they work and I think they work in the movie like I said the first movie was not my favorite and the biggest part about that movie that worked for me was the portrayal that Tom Hardy did and the relationship between Eddie and Venom and I think the smartest thing this movie did was double down on that show the evolution of that relationship to its overall natural conclusion that we get at the end of the movie and it just works and I think having a much more focused smaller story that focuses more on the characters and having a better villain and a better overall connection between the villain and the and hero of the movie it worked so much better than the first movie did if you weren't a fan of the first movie you may not you might not be as much of a fan of the second movie but if you do like the more personal story and this whole little quirky queer relationship that they're 
hinting at between Eddie and Venom. I think you'll like. I think you'll like Venom Let There Be Carnage. I honestly like it better than the first one. Is it is it is it top ten comic book movies? No, but but is it much better than the first one for me? Yes, I think it is much. It's a much better movie, and I think overall the story works a little bit better. I think the villains work well for the story that they're telling and the characters that were the primary focus i feel like got the focus that they needed overall i really enjoyed venom let there be Car carnage is it my favorite it's better than the first that's probably the best thing i can say it's better than the first one to me and some people really like the first one and that's totally cool i'm glad you really like it if you really like the first one you're definitely going to love the second one for someone who wasn't a fan of the first one but really liked Tom Hardy's performance, I think the second one does a much better job telling the story, telling this awkward relationship <laughs> between Eddie and Venom, this weird, this weird couple who just is trying to navigate a sticky situation, no pun intended. Now, spoiler warning for the post credit scene. I'm only going to talk about it for a few minutes. I just... I just feel like if I'm going to give a full review of this movie without spoiling anything, I can't do that without talking about the post credit scene. So, before I talk about it, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this and all of my videos. I really do appreciate it. If, if you're new to the channel, hopefully you subscribe, hopefully you enjoy this type of content. You can follow me on a lot of social media that's listed at the end of this video, but it's all at Geek Will, so feel free to check it out there. Now. I will wave my hands once the spoiler warning is done. You've been warned, or there's a time code to when I'm done talking about it. You can skip ahead to that. All right, spoiler warnings, three, two, one. The post credit scene of Venom Let There Be Carnage, we see Venom and Eddie basically lying low because they are being looked for by the authorities due to the fact that they're basically been exposed to the world. And, you know, they use the term lethal protector a lot, which is just what he was called in the comics. It was a nickname for him. But he's, they're watching something, they're in some weird shack and like somewhere in Central America, I'm assuming, or some sort of tropical place. And there's a mention about how the symbiotes have a hive mind connection across universes. This is where I knew I was like, okay, what are we doing here? Where all of a sudden Venom tries to show Eddie something, and I don't know, this is where they leave it kind of ambiguous. If what happens is Venom's doing or an outside force, but I'm assuming it's an outside force because of Venom and Eddie's reaction, when the room that they're in changes to a different type of resort and a different thing on TV, where it's actually J. Jonah Jameson talking about the events from Spider-Man Far From Home, where Peter Parker's identity has been revealed, and we see Tom Holland in his Spider-Man outfit on camera with J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson talking about it, and, and this sort of reveal with the change in location and Eddie and Venom's confusion, this clearly is a ripple effect from the events that are going to take place in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. If this is to be believed, this officially means that Venom is canonical to the MCU now. The Tom Hardy Venom. And they're setting up whatever the third Venom movie is going to be. It looks like it's going to take place in the MCU with Tom, with Tom Holland Spider-Man involved. This might be how we'll get a redesign for the Venom symbiote outfit where we will get get the entire like white spider on on the chest of venom so that's a huge reveal that they basically warped tom hardy into the mcu's you know universe basically if if the post credit scene is to be believed especially venom's eerily licking of the screen at tom holland's spider-man persona there's definitely going to be a conversation. They've talked about it. They've hinted at it. And this is this is our this is our big crescendo. Is that yes, he is official. At least based off of what we're seeing, he is official in the MCU now. Because it wasn't like they pulled Spider-Man to the Venom universe. They brought Venom to this universe with Spider-Man, and we know Spider-Man is a part of the MCU, so it's the only thing that makes sense. It seems like it might be a slight spoiler for the for for Spider-Man No Way Home because if they brought Venom 
into this universe, then clearly, who else did they bring into the universe? It's got to be... So maybe this version of Doc Ock that we're getting, Green Goblin we're getting, you know, maybe... Maybe these versions are now going to be a part of the current iteration of the MCU. And I'm assuming, based off of all of this, the agreement relationship between Sony and Marvel must be continuing. Because you would, if it wasn't continuing, if there was a possibility that it wasn't going to be re-upped, you wouldn't bring Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock character, his Venom character, to the MCU. You would have left it ambiguous to have... Tom Holland show up in the MC show up in the Venom like post credit scene. If, if that was the plan, it could change. It could honestly change. It could, but the fact that the background changed is what led me to think, oh shit, they brought him into our universe or into the MCU. So that's huge. That's that's universe breaking huge. So what does that mean for like Morbius? Are they going to do the same thing with Morbius? Is that why? Michael Keaton's it does the Morbius movie now take place in the MCU is that been is that confirmed there's so many questions to be asked just off of the post credit scene um, which is why I can talk about it without spoiling it and that also is is what affected my opinion of the end of the movie based off the post credit scene because where some of these characters are left it left it like they were just writing them off and but it makes sense if they're moving him to a different universe and so all these other characters are going to be left in this other universe. Because the multiverse is a thing. We've been talking about it since WandaVision. Multiverse is a thing. Um, or Loki. It's a thing. So if you want to hear more about the multiverse, I have a whole list of Marvel What If, Marvel what if episodes that you're more than welcome to check out. So, all right. That's it. That's talking about the post credit scene is done. So that is my review for Sp <laughs> Spider-Man. That is my review for Venom Let There Be Carnage. Hopefully you've had a chance to see it. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts on it. Try to keep it spoiler free. If you are gonna mention anything about the post credit scene, give a little bit of a spoiler warning before you start typing, please. Um, just in case anybody else checks this out. You can follow me on all the social media listed at the end of this video. I've got a ton of videos on the channel you're more than welcome to check out. Like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you shared this video. Hopefully you hit me up. Let me know what your thoughts are. And as always, until next time, I will catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you did like this video, why not give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends? You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my gorgeous little face right over there. You can follow me on all the various social media platforms right below. And last but certainly not least, if you've got a few extra minutes, why not check out one of the lovely videos floating right over here. Later.